this video, we will go through how to debug Universal Dashboard scripts. Although Universal Dashboard makes it very easy to create websites, sometimes it's a little complicated figuring out why something isn't working. This primarily has to do with the way that Universal Dashboard uses run spaces. In this example, we have a dashboard called UDPG Hero, which is used for showing uh, Postgres database information. When I reload this page, um, you'll see that I have a couple controls on here. And if I go to my PowerShell prompt and then type get, get run space, you'll see that I have a bunch of different run spaces running uh, inside this dashboard. This is done for performance reasons, and there's a run space pool that um, is used so that you can make more requests to the Universal Dashboard service than uh, you could with a single run space. And that's why you can't use the simple uh, debugging techniques you usually use in things like VS Code, where you set breakpoints and stuff through your code. So I'm going to show you some examples of uh, either tools or techniques that you can use to uh, better debug your Universal Dashboard scripts. So as you can see on the bottom of this dashboard, I have a top sources uh, table down here that isn't showing any data. But I do have two items up here that are showing data. So if I want to figure out why that's happening, there's a couple ways I would go about it. The first way is to take advantage of um, write UD log. So part of Universal Dashboard is a logging framework called nlog. And what you can do is you can actually enable logging by using enable UD logging. It supports um, console logging by default, um, but it also works as a, a file system logger as well. You can set a level value um, anywhere from debug to error, and it will only show things above that level. So if you set it to debug, it'll go debug through error or info, wouldn't show debug, that kind of thing. So let's just enable logging, and let's put a log message into our connections uh, script that's responsible for creating the connections page where we're having our problem. So if I put a write UD log um, call after the sources, what I can do is I can actually specify a message that I'd like to show up in the log. Um, that message could be anything. In this case, we're going to call it uh, sources, just make it a little easier to see. And so now when this actual endpoint executes, what we're going to see is this log message appear in the log uh, for Universal Dashboard, which is going to appear in the console in this current configuration. So now if I restart my dashboard, um, you'll see that it, there's a lot more text written out to the screen here. Uh, if I go back to my dashboard page, um, what you'll see is when this loads, uh, a bunch more information was written out to this page. And if we scroll through this text, um, eventually you'll be able to find your uh, log message that you put in here. So you can see here I put sources and I'm getting a system.data row back from my um, in invoke uh, Postgres call. So I'm actually getting data back. So uh, I'd have to go through another debugging steps, add some more log messages, that kind of thing, to find out um, other things about this script that uh, could be causing this problem. Um, finally, uh, probably the most effective way to go about debugging a run space is actually to use the debugger itself. So there's a couple steps to making uh, this work correctly. Uh, the first thing is that we need to find the endpoint that we want to debug. So in our example here, um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, disable logging, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. And then um, in our example here, this is the endpoint that uh, we're having problems with. And in this endpoint, what we can do is we can actually add a wait debugger call. So what wait debugger will do is it actually will stop this particular endpoint from executing and wait for the debugger to attach to that endpoint. So uh, this is actually just kind of a built-in uh, PowerShell command. And you'll be able to use this um, pretty much wherever you're hosting Universal Dashboard. Um, and I'll show you how this works. So now I have wait debugger in here. If I go back to my PowerShell window, um, clear the screen. Uh, let's make sure we disable UD logging so that it doesn't log so much anymore. Uh, and then let's start up our dashboard again. So now we have our dashboard running. And like I ran before, you can actually look at the run spaces that are currently running in um, in this or in this PowerShell process. Um, now if we go back to our page and refresh it again, 
you'll see that these two loaded, this one still didn't load, but now if I come back to uh, my PowerShell window, you'll see that run space 87 here is now in breakpoint. Uh, that means that it's waiting for the debugger and it's sitting on this wait debugger call. So we now know that this endpoint is currently running inside run space 87 of this PowerShell process. So what you can actually do is you can hook up VS Code to this PowerShell um, process and debug that particular endpoint. So if we actually uh, go to the debug tab, which I'm already on, as you can see, I have no configurations configured at the moment. I can click add configuration. It'll create a default launch.json file in the VS Code folder in the current directory I'm in. And if we scroll down, what you'll see is there is a PowerShell attached to process option here. Um, the first uh, thing here is the process ID. Um, that's what we'll have to specify and pick this particular PowerShell process. The run space ID is the run space that we actually want VS Code to attach to. Again, what we can do is you can see that uh, we are currently sitting on uh, run space 87. So that's the value I'm going to put here. If I save that, and then I select PowerShell. Well, first we have to get our process ID. That'll make it a little bit easier. So if you use the PID variable, um, you'll see that I'm in process 12,740. So now when I hit uh, PowerShell attach to host process, and then hit the play button or F5, you'll see that a couple things are listed. I have Docker running, I have a service running that has PowerShell running in it, but I also have my PowerShell process, which is 12.7740. So if I click that, now you'll see that the debugger has actually broke inside of my endpoint. Um, and this is the code for that particular endpoint. What's neat about this is it actually creates a temp file for you and all that kind of stuff and copies it around and makes it so that um, you can actually debug your script here. On the left, you'll see that we have all the different variables for a universal dashboard run space. Um, things like you know, your connection ID, the claims principle that I showed earlier, um, that kind of thing. So on the bottom here, you can see that I can then type in values for those variables. For example, I can look at the response or the request coming in from the HTTP um, value from uh, ASP.NET Core. So right off the bat, I can actually tell that this particular value here, sources, is now spelled incorrectly. So let's actually uh, stop this debugger and fix this value, uh, not in this temp file, but actually in our connections here. Um, so now when I come back to my uh, dashboard, what you'll see is it still won't load because I have the wait debugger in there. And I can look at the run space again. And you can see now I'm in run space uh, 129, ID 129. So let's reattach to that process. Oops. We actually don't want to uh, attach that app. Uh, we have to actually modify this to 127, I believe. 129. Uh, launch that and select this process. And now you can see that we are debugging um, again in our endpoint. This time, you'll see that since I spelled sources correctly, on the left-hand side here, I have the sources variable. So uh, the way that universal dashboard endpoints work is if you um, are bringing in a variable such as uh, sources, it won't actually bring it in unless um, it can find it. So that is why sources now is available here. And if we actually take a look at sources, we can actually go ahead and um, see that this data row contains our information. Once we uh, click run here, if we go back to our page, you'll see that now um, my uh, table has loaded the data correctly. So in this video, I went over a couple different techniques you can use to try to debug your uh, universal dashboard scripts. I hope you find this helpful.